What a great prayer for the Christian life. Let your kingdom come. We think about what God's sovereign work on this earth is until he returns. It involves all of us believing and proclaiming the gospel. This morning we're going to celebrate the Lord's death and in taking communion together, the Lord's table, we proclaim his death until he comes. We're going to open our Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 18 to prepare our hearts for that. If you don't have a Bible, we'd love to put one in your hands. You can just put your hand up and the, the men coming down the aisles will put a Bible in your hands so you can follow along in God's word. Again, we're in Ezekiel 18 this morning to prepare our hearts. If you don't own a Bible, uh, this Bible that we're giving to you is one we'd love for you to keep so that you can read God's word for yourself. I want you to turn your eyes to Ezekiel 18 and verse 23. As we prepare for the Lord's table, I want us to understand the disposition of our God. What is his heart towards us who are sinners? He says, do I have any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord Yahweh, rather than that he should turn from his ways and live. But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and does according to all the abominations that a wicked man does, will he live? All his righteous deeds which he has done will not be remembered for his treachery which he has committed and his sin which he has committed. For them he will die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not right. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not right? Is it not your ways that are not right? When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies because of it, for his iniquity which he has committed, he will die. Again, when a wicked man turns away from his wickedness which he has committed, and practices justice and righteousness, he will save his life because he considered and turned away from his transgressions which he committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. But the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not right. Are my ways not right, O house of Israel? Is it not your ways that are not right? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, each according to his conduct, declares the Lord Yahweh. Repent and turn away from all your transgressions so that iniquity may not become a stumbling block to you. Cast away from you all your transgressions which you have committed and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies, declares the Lord Yahweh. Therefore, repent and live. And we see in this passage two significant portions of God's heart towards sinners. The first is that sin deserves death. God will punish the wicked for their wickedness. And all of us fall in that category by nature and by what we have done. It's already too late for us to be righteous. We've already sinned. And yet listen to the heart of God. If any turns away from his sins and turns toward God, he says he will live. The prophet Isaiah says something similar in Isaiah 59. Your sins have made a separation between you and God. And the same God says, though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. We come to the Lord's table again. This reminder that Jesus said he would pour out his own blood. He would give up his own life as a substitute payment in the place of our sins. And that anyone who would come to him by faith would have what Ezekiel promised, what Isaiah promised. Life in God and forgiveness of sins. That which is filthy made clean, the separation removed a bringing near to God. That doesn't happen by you cleaning up yourself. How could you? It comes only by the death of God's servant, his Messiah, his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus went to the cross in order to pay for sins. It's what we celebrate. It's what we proclaim in this ceremony until he returns. He will come and he will bring his kingdom and there will be a reckoning. 
And all those who have not turned to him in faith will face judgment for their sins. But hear the heart of our God. It does not please him that any should die, but rather that sinners would turn and live. I don't know if you have attempted by your own efforts to make your way to God. It has failed. It will always fail. It can never succeed. You could never do enough. You can't make up the difference. You can't bridge the gap. But salvation in God is so close. It is near you, friend. To simply turn from a life of of rejection of God and turn to him in faith. To believe fully that his son Jesus actually pays for sins will be to have life this day. To have forgiveness even now. If you don't know Jesus Christ, would you turn to him this morning in faith? Believe that his death paid for your sins. And enter into relationship with God. What we are about to do now with a couple of symbols, some bread and some juice. The bread, a symbol of Jesus' body. The juice, a symbol of his blood. We are going to consume them. We are going to eat the bread. A a, a reminder that Jesus suffered on the cross in his body. We are going to drink the juice. A reminder that his blood was spilled. This is not some magical ceremony. It is a memorial, a remembrance of what Jesus has done to finish the work of redemption for all who believe. And Christians, we are about to take these symbols as a proclamation of our faith in his death to pay for our sins. There will be some moments of silence and opportunity for you to think about your own sin to confess before the Lord anything that you've not taken to him yet, and to bank on the promise that God is faithful and just and will forgive you of all sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you're not a believer here this morning, we would ask that you not take the bread and the juice. That is for believers in Jesus Christ. You don't have to be a member of Grace Bible Church to participate, but you do have to be a member of Christ. You have to have believed in him for salvation. And so if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, contemplate eternity, contemplate the the guilt of your sin, and contemplate the fact there is only one Savior. It is in Jesus Christ. After a few moments of silence where you will have had opportunity to examine your heart, to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, we will take these elements together. So hold on to them and I'll lead us to take these in a few moments. The men will come now and distribute those.